Parliament passed a modified version of the Sugar and Molasses Act in 1733, which was about to expire on April 5, 1764. Because of the Molasses Act, colonial merchants had to pay a tax of six pence per gallon on the importation of foreign molasses. But because it became corrupt, they mostly evaded the taxes and undercut the intention of the tax. This harmed the British West Indies market in molasses and sugar and the market for rum, which the colonies had been producing in quantity with the cheaper French molasses. The first Lord of the Treasury and Chancellor of the Exchequer Lord Greenville was trying to bring the colonists in line with regard to payment of taxes. He had, to, he had made the Navy's presence stronger and instructed them to become more active in customs enforcement. Parliament decided it would be wise to make a few adjustments to the trade regulations. The Sugar Act reduced the rate of tax on molasses from 6 pence to 3 pence per gallon. While Grenville took measures that the duty be harshly enforced, the Act also listed more foreign goods to be taxed including sugar, certain wines, coffee, pimento, cambric, and printed calico, and fur further regulated the export of lumber and iron. The Sugar Act led to the American Revolution because when they were weren't enforcing the Sugar Act, the colonists were getting away with smuggling in molasses and sugar. But, but after they changed the Act and became cheaper and more enforced, the colonists began to get mad, causing the American Revolution. But without the Sugar Act, revolution may not have happened in the in states because the colonists wouldn't have gotten mad at the change in enforcement and none of the revolution would have happened.